In September 1944, a group of Canadian soldiers faced something monstrous on the beaches of northern France. It had been three months since the Allies had launched the operation to liberate Western Europe. Now it was the turn of the French coast of Calais, occupied by the men of the Third Reich. They were second-rate positions, defended by volunteers and Volksdeutsch, a word used to denote Germans born outside their country. The leaders of the military operation assigned a body of Canadian forces the task of conquering the fortresses of Calais. It seemed like a simple mission, since they did not have to face elite troops or those with great combat experience. However, it took the Canadians a full week to meet their target. Once they had taken all of the coastal positions, they rounded up all the German soldiers who had surrendered and prepared to take them as prisoners of war. It was there when the winners detected something out of the ordinary. In that crowd of Burmak troops, there was one man who stood out above all the rest. The reason that all eyes were on him was simple, his enormous height of more than two meters. Unknowingly, the Canadians had run into the tallest man in the German army. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you about the fascinating life of Jacob Nacken. Are you ready? Let's get started. Jacob Nacken, who would become known as the tallest soldier in the Burmacht, was born on February 15, 1906 in the city of Dusseldorf, Germany. The incredible height that he would reach is not surprising when we consider that all the members of his family had similar features. Both his mother and his father were six feet tall, while his three brothers were six feet eight, six feet three, and seven feet. Jacob was the one who crowned that home of giants, growing far above all the others, until he was two meters twenty-one centimeters tall. Jacob Nacken's adolescence took place at one of the most critical moments in German history. After suffering a defeat in World War I, the country was plunged into political and economic instability. Germans were hit by hyperinflation, which pulverized their incomes, as well as by unemployment and a rising wave of violence, bombings and murders by extremist political movements. In the context of a nation severely hit by the lack of work, Jacob looked for a way to help his family and survive by resorting to what made him unique. Using his height, he entered show business and got a job with a traveling circus. This type of business was constantly looking for people with unusual physical characteristics, advertised as freaks of nature to attract the public. In his new role as a circus attraction, Jacob toured the stages of Europe under the stage name of Uranus, a nickname that came from the god of the sky in Greek mythology. However, over time, and as his fame grew, the young man earned a new alias. The circus owners dubbed him the Rhineland Giant and spread the word that he was the tallest man in the world, hoping to capture people's curiosity. The strategy was a success, and over the next 20 years, Jacob became a minor celebrity on the old continent. In his shows, he would appear dressed as an American cowboy or a British gentleman, and would perform humorous routines in the company of a child dressed as an adult, further emphasizing his extraordinary height. As for his private life, the giant was satisfied with his work in the circus, and he married a Belgian woman who was 1 meter and 75 centimeters tall. In 1939, Jacob Nacken was in the United States participating in the New York World's Fair, when he suddenly received the news that war had broken out in Europe. Although the giant was one of the main stars of the North American event, he felt that he had a responsibility towards Germany. He had no relationship with the National Socialist movement, much less he was an admirer of Hitler, but he believed that, as a German, he had an obligation to defend his homeland. For this reason, he left the New York Fair and headed as quickly as possible to his country, where he enlisted in the army. Thus, he became the tallest soldier the Burmacht had on record. However, there were two drawbacks that made Jacob not an ideal military man. The first of these was that the giant was considered too old to be of any use in major theaters of battle, as he was 34 years old at the time. The second problem was that Jacob's physical skills were rather poor, and his lack of agility, coupled with his towering height, made him an ideal target for any half-skilled sniper. All of this meant that he was not destined to fight at the front, but instead was assigned maintenance tasks in barracks, 
far from the most terrible war experience. For four years the giant did not see any action, but things changed in the middle of 1944. By then, the war was in its final stage, it had claimed the lives of millions of people and had devastated the resources of Germany. Faced with a shortage of men, they turned to people like Jacob, who had previously been relegated to lesser positions. The tallest soldier in the Burmak was sent to the shores of Calais, in northern France, to reinforce the German artillery. This was a point of great strategic importance, since it was 33 kilometers from England, which made it a privileged place for the Allies to launch a maritime invasion. Hitler was convinced that his enemies would land here, but this proved to be a mistake, since D-Day, which began the liberation of Western Europe, occurred in Normandy and not Calais. Jacob, along with his inexperienced comrades, spent long months waiting for an attack that never came. However, when the Allies landed, his unit was isolated from the rest of the German troops. In September, Calais was conquered by Canadian soldiers, and the Germans surrendered without a battle. The victors grouped the prisoners together for a quick count, when they noticed Jacob's presence. They were struck by his extraordinary height, and had his picture taken with a 5'6 American soldier. The image ran through all the newspapers of the Allied powers, and was seen as an accurate metaphor for war. The German giant surrendered to the smallest American, like Goliath, to David. Jacob Nacken was sent to Great Britain as a prisoner of war, and remained there until the war came to an end. In 1950, he moved to the United States with his family, and continued to work in circus shows. Five years later, he was granted American citizenship. In his old age, he returned to Germany, where he passed away on March 29, 1987, at the age of 81. We are reaching the end of the video and we want to ask you, do you think Jacob Nacken could have been of more use in the war? Leave your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.